everyone, Marianne here. Back in 1991, the Royal Commission into Aboriginal Deaths in Custody findings were handed down. 339 recommendations and the majority of them haven't been um, implemented. So basically today we still have an alarming rate of deaths in custody occurring. It's not good enough that one in 12 Aboriginal men are in custody at one time. 70 to 80% of the offenders in juvenile detention centre are Aboriginal and the majority of the women in the women's prisons are Aboriginal women. What really needs to happen is there needs to be more of a focus on preventing people going into the system in the first place. And with the recommendations from the Royal Commission being implemented, we can actually work towards creating rehabilitation training centres so that people can be trained up so that they can get into employment, get healing and be trained up so that they can go and achieve their goals and their dreams and be rehabilitated to come back into the community and move forward in their lives. Basically what we have here in Western Australia is a punishment mentality with each political party focusing on, on this type of way to move forward in regards to tackling crime. And we really need to find other solutions that will work rather than repeating something that has failed you know, for many years. This could reduce the amount of deaths in custody that we have in WA where our people are dying at an alarming rate. Australia is the only country in the whole world that doesn't have any kind of formal treaty agreement with the original people. What we have here is a native title process that doesn't work. It makes mining companies rich, it makes lawyers rich. The benefits do not flow on the ground with Aboriginal people. What we need to have are real land rights. And this is what the sovereignty movement fight for, is real land rights. Because what we actually have here is an illegal occupation of stolen land. There needs to be some kind of formal treaty process put in place that establishes you know, our rights to recognise our land rights and implement those land rights on a state level. Victoria are doing it, and I don't see why WA can't follow the same. We just get down on the ground, support the Aboriginal people to establish those songline treaties that were in place before colonisation, and then once those processes are followed, there is nothing stopping the WA government from moving forward and engaging with the treaty process with all those nations that exist within Western Australia. In 2007, Kevin Rudd, the then Australian Prime Minister, said sorry for the forced removal of children back in the stolen generation. What we have here today in 2021 is a higher rate of Aboriginal children being put into the foster care system. Worse than 2007, worse than the stolen generation. 83% of funding put into the Department of Child Protection is actually for removing children from their families, with only 17% being spent on family support. This needs to change. Children cannot be removed from their families and placed into a foster care system, further traumatising them and having half of Bankshire Hill Detention Centre detainees actually being under the care of the state. This statistic alone shows that the foster care system, the forced removal system is not working. So we need to go back to the funding, we need to siphon more of that money into family support and we need to keep the families together because the children are our future and they need love, they need nurture, they need support. All these issues are drastically impacting on Aboriginal people's lives and being able to move forward. What we really need to do is focus on the social justice issues in the community. We need to drastically change public policy in regard to providing and implementing mental health services. And if people are really serious about wanting change and moving forward, what we really need to do is work together because Black Lives Matter.